Hello friends, James Corbett here from FukushimaUpdate.com with your Fukushima updates for the the week of November 21st, 2011. Today is the 23rd of November 2011 here in Japan, and it's just going on 4 p.m. Japanese Standard Time. So I want to highlight the most interesting posts on Fukushima Update from the past week, and I certainly hope you are checking on a daily basis because there's been a lot of updates going on recently. But let's start here with this post called Aqua Chernobyl. Again, this one comes from fukushima-diary.com and it includes this simulation of the spread of radioactivity from the Fukushima plant into the Pacific Ocean and as you can see the spread as of November 11th 2011 well it's quite an incredible plume as you can see right there in that simulation and this comes from ASR and of course there is a link down here to ASR so you can go check them out and see how they came to their information uh, there's also a bit of information at the bottom of this post that I'll show you just as this video ends here. I'll show you. Here we have the uh, the snapshots from March 18th, April, May. This one's from July, September, and November as we see the radioactive plume as of November 11th stretching all the way out here into the Pacific Ocean. Of course, being the primary reason that I'm not eating any seafood that I don't know where it's coming from because although there might be some area down in Kyushu or so where there, um, there hasn't been the plume yet, it certainly is extending all the way out here. And as we're going to see in a recent Fukushima update, that plume now crossing the international date line on its way, on its inevitable journey towards the western coast of North America. And again, as I said, there's more information about this model and how it was arrived at at the bottom of this post, but I thought that was a particularly interesting one to highlight, as is this one also from Fukushima-Diary.com, also from the 15th of November, Radiation Symptoms Maps. I thought this was a very interesting post. It shows a breakdown of the um, various symptoms um, that, and, and showing the reporting of those symptoms by prefecture. So we have here, for example, as a control, uh, just a, a map of uh, bone fracture cases in Japan broken down by prefecture. Blue, dark blue meaning um, almost no cases, red meaning a high incidence. And as you would expect to see, a pretty random scattering of incidents of bone fractures throughout Japan. Obviously, that has nothing to do with radiation, so it's kind of a control in this. But looking, for example, at nosebleeds, you see here in the western part of Japan, very, very few. Uh, in the Fukushima area, very, very high incidence. And again, in that area generally quite a high incidence of nosebleeds um, again just taken by itself perhaps not that indicative of anything but when you overlay that on the map of diarrhea cases of diarrhea that have been reported again in the western part of japan very low incidence also very low in the northern part but again highest right here in this fukushima area and then sore throats again also mapping on to the area where the highest spread of contamination has been from the radioactive fallout and that's interesting in the light of recent developments, for example, with the Japanese imperial family. If you've been following Fukushima Update, you know that the emperor himself has been recently hospitalized with sore throat and other symptoms. So again, none of these are indicative of anything in, uh, of and by themselves. But when you overlay them on top of each other and find in every case that the highest incidence of these types of uh, symptoms, which could be possible radiation sickness symptoms, uh, in every single case maps onto the exact location of the disaster itself, that's at least... Uh, pointing us in a certain direction, a very interesting post. Um, again, of course, we have the Fukushima updates, the daily updates every single day. For example, day 251, highlighting a story about smartphone Geiger counters being developed here in Japan, now on sale. Um, we also have this, uh, the World the, uh, radio program, it's talking about the new reports on the Fukushima disaster and the radioactive spread, and it's kind of a propaganda report, I think, but I'll let you uh, listen and choose uh, decide for yourself. Uh, day 252 updates, talking about wind direction forecasts being covered up. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we also from last week, we had iodine-131 cloud over Europe. Um, so some stories about that. It's now supposedly the official word is it came from this Hungarian uh, reactor, which the scientists working there said it couldn't possibly have come from them, but that's uh, the official word last I've heard. Um, an interesting post from fairwoods.com, Arnie Gunderson doing a little demonstration of hydrogen buildup at Fukushima and just doing a little demo here to show what that means and uh, how the explosion at uh, hydrogen explosion can occur. So an uh, interesting little demonstration from Arnie. Uh, we have Japan's pri the Prime Minister's speech at the Fukushima Conference. This, of course, from Prime Minister Noda, who was speaking at the Fukushima Conference on November 11th, 2011. This is just sort of a rough translation, but I think you'll get the idea from it. And... Um, 
uh, again, take it for what it's worth, which might be nothing at all, but there it is. An ex- interesting story from SKF about a Japanese newspaper misrepresenting a cesium study. So I'll let you read into his translation of the article and the way that it was uh, done wrong. And here's a little uh, chart that he shows to show why it was done wrong. So I'll let you read into that for yourself. I thought it was an interesting story and uh, especially humorous, the Yomiuri Shinbun um, being renamed by SKF Gomiuri, meaning garbage seller. So um, just kind of Japanese play on word humor there. Uh, Fukushima updates for day 253. Then moving on to uh, the latest updates from this uh, this past few days, we have, of course, day 255 updates. We have micro re- remediation of the Japanese landscape after radioactive fallout. An interesting little story that was sent in by a, a listener sent in this link from lifeboxcompany.com. I haven't looked into it greatly for myself, so I don't I can't really pronounce on it either way, but I thought it was interesting to, uh, to see this study and talking about the possibility of using fungi to basically extract the radioactive elements from the soil. An interesting idea. And um, I'll let you look into that for yourself. Uh, we also have this interesting report from Reuters, also said in by a FukushimaUpdate.com reader who uh, wanted to bring this to your attention. It's a Reuters story about uh, all 58 French nuclear reactors need safety upgrades. So we've been reading about stress tests going on in various countries to show that all these nuclear reactors are perfectly safe. But there's something that kind of indicates the exact opposite. And then the uh, daily updates for the last couple of days. For some reason, a couple of days ago, there was really very, very, very few stories to report. A very slow day. Um, so I've highlighted all the ones that I could find that were of, uh, that were new or of relevance. And then today, or the last today's updates, I did this earlier today, Japanese time. It would have been yesterday for you in North America. And uh, just talking about, for example, this highlighted story about radioactive strontium found in central Tokyo. And irony of ironies, the absolute highest rate was found on the very front steps of the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry with a whopping 48,000 becquerels per kilogram of cesium-134 and 137. So that's an interesting story. And then a slew of stories from eanynews.com um, talking about huge steam explosions possible if a melt-through occurs and it, the fuel hits uh, groundwater. Uh, talking about an expert saying, I'm not ruling out a nuclear bomb type explosion. Talking about the government admitting that one tenth of Japan has been contaminated. Um, as I said, that X- SKF story about contaminated water from Fukushima crossing the international dateline. And uh, some interesting ones from Fukushima Diary again. TEPCO official, uh, officially admit they don't need nuclear power. Uh, talking about the nuclear power uh, not actually being necessary at all. They could actually power Japan without nuclear power at all. So... Um, and everybody say hello to my wife who just came in from shopping. Um, Namie Town is 33 times worse than Chernobyl. Um, March of radioactive pollen, a very important story here in Japan as obviously the radioactive pollen um, becoming a concern, pollen itself being a concern for many Japanese with hay fever, especially during the uh, spring months. So coming up in a couple of months, uh, we'll have radioactive pollen to be worrying about. Uh, a follow-up story on that Japanese newscaster who was eating Fukushima uh, produce to show that it's perfectly safe, and then he developed acute lymphatic leukemia. Uh, unfortunately, it seems he only has a 30% survival chance over the next five years. Um, nothing to be to be happy about by any means. Um, the tragic tragic thing to see in any event and uh and it, it, again of course that can't be directly related to fukushima but then again that's the exact problem with this type of long slow uh, problem we can't relate anything directly back to fukushima because uh, there's always that that cloud of doubt over everything so that's uh, convenient for the people who would like to say that nothing uh, has really developed out of fukushima at any rate and then we have radiation levels in Fukushima, relatively safe according to study from MNT, that's Medical News Today. And finally, some editorials, uh, Mainichi Daily, Denki Shimbun, Reformer, and an interesting one from Guardian about post-Fukushima anti-radiation pills condemned by scientists, talking about Dr. Christopher Bub- Busby, um, who I'm sure many of the viewers of this will know, um, and talking about a, well, a, what seems to be a rather shady website that he's involved with, selling some rather, um, well, overpriced products from what it looks like so um, very interesting and I'll let you uh, read through that and decide for yourself but of course we always have to be wary of people trying to make a profit from this type of disaster at any rate those are the updates for today and more will be going up later my time which should be today your time if that makes any sense whatsoever at any rate of course uh, thank you for uh, staying tuned to Fukushima update and thank you for all the contact and tips I'm getting through the contact form and your support it is greatly appreciated